all helped to create it. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Beth Garrison. Welcome to this edition of Inside Kern. We have wrappers from candy bars, aluminum cans from the sodas we drink, and plastic. Everything is wrapped in plastic. And then there's old refrigerators, mattresses, scrap wood, tires and empty cereal boxes, plastic bottles, and tin cans. The list goes on and on. Now some of these items can and should be thrown away and buried in a landfill. But some of them can and should be recycled. It's the job of the County of Kern to manage all of this trash. And to that end, they have developed and they implement disposal and recycling programs from Lost Hills to Boron. Today we're at the Shafter Landfill where we're going to get a bird's eye view on the recycling programs available to both businesses and residents. That will help us do the right thing. And then it's off to the County Special Waste Facility where the mystery of household hazardous waste will be revealed. So settle in and join me as we learn the truth about trash on this edition of Inside Kern. There are 14 disposal sites throughout Kern County, and while all of them accept trash from both businesses and residents, some of them have extensive recycling programs right on the landfill footprint. And I don't just mean bottles and cans. Joining us today to tell us about these diversion programs is Chuck McGee. He manages them for the county. My name is Chuck McGee. Okay. I've been working for the County of Kern for 25 years now. The last 20 years of it have been directly involved with the recycling and diversion programs for the county. So what do you recycle here on the landfill proper? We recycle the standard items that most people are familiar with, the cardboards, the cans, the bottles, the paper, that type of thing. But what they may not know is we also recycle their appliances, their electronics, their grass, their limbs, their wood. Uh, tires pretty much we've got a program if they've got a good material that's got a market for recycling we try to implement but it's a lot more than just what generally goes into the blue cart even though we have all those blue cart materials available here for recycling as well we try to get as much diversion prior to the landfill as possible but we also want to make sure that we get as much as possible once the material gets here as well so what happens if I'm bringing my load out to the landfill and I, I have my old refrigerator and I have some residential waste and I have a tire in the back of my truck and I'm just going to go to the, to the landfill portion because that's all I know. Can I dump it all there? You can dump it at the facility, but they're going to send you somewhere different. What we're going to do is when you get to the gatehouse, you're going to come in and they're going to ask you what you have and you just tell them the exact same thing she just said. And they're going to ask you to pull into this area, which we call the recycling diversion area. When you get in here, somebody's going to meet you again and say, okay, would you take the refrigerator over here? And you'll see the pile of refrigerators and they'll say the tire goes over there. And then to make your life as easy as possible and just throw your trash in that bin, we'll take it up there for you. 
So you can stop and get everything done right here. You've gone to the landfill, you've gotten rid of your waste and all your recyclables, and you never actually went to the working face. So from a residential perspective, what is the number one thing that is diverted here at the landfill? Residents, believe it or not, one of the biggest items that we recycle for them, and they don't give this a lot of thought, is grass. Grass is fully recyclable into a compost material, very beneficial for this area. Uh, a lot of people go to the store and buy potting soil. This is where it comes from. Um, the second biggest thing is probably their appliances. A lot of people bring in their, you know, they've got a new appliance, so they'll bring their old ones in here, and they think they're just gonna get thrown away. Well, we're gonna separate those out because those aren't gonna get thrown away. We are going to recycle those back into the metal or the parts, whichever the companies decide the best. Now let's shift to business. What would you say is the number one uh, item that businesses recycle? The biggest bang for the buck in businesses seems to be paper and wood. They bring in a tremendous amount. Offices, big on paper, if they don't have a program there and they're throwing away their the outline businesses that aren't more located in the metro area are bringing in their recyclables. They've got office recycling, but if they don't, they can bring the papers in. They just put it in file boxes, bring it in. We have a spot for it. But the other businesses, a lot of pallets, a lot of materials that come on wood uh, structures, those kind of things are huge in weight. So when we look at a weight percentage, that's our biggest one. You might get a lot of things like, oh, these large round wood items that they just have, these very heavy, but once they've got the material off them, they need to get rid of them. In old days, they throw them away, now we recycle. So I have grass and, oh, I trim my trees. Can I bring all of that and is all green waste created equal? In a way, yes, and in a way, no. All green waste is created equal and is recyclable. If we know what it is, sometimes we've got to separate it out. Now, for the homeowner that throws it in their green can, it's all going to go in the one green can, so we're going to separate it out. So if you bring it in yourself and you have it separated, we really like you. You've saved us a lot of work. But if you didn't know before you got here, we're going to separate it out for you anyway. Uh, branches, tree trimmings, those kind of things look a lot more like wood than grass. The grass goes into compost, the wood goes into the wood pile. Uh, and we'll separate that out. The ones that kind of hold people up are shrubs. They don't know, is that wood or is it grass? We put it in with the grass because that's something we're going to make compost out of. Now, what kind of wood products do you get? Just scrap lumbers, pallets? We get pretty much everything that's made out of wood. Furniture, good hardwood furniture, we get a tremendous amount of that, and it's still wood. Uh, they may be done with the dresser or whatever, but we're not done with the wood. Uh, we get the pallets, we get the construction lumber, we get the fence boards that get torn down because uh, it's time for a new fence. We get pretty much every kind of wood you can think of. A lot of packaging wood, a lot of it's brand new. It's been used for a package and it's like really nice looking wood. Of course, we get a lot of construction demolition material where the wood's been in a house for 30 years and it doesn't look as well. But it's not an appearance situation. It's the fact that it's still wood and that's what we're looking for in that product. So switching to metal, you have a variety of things that, that are made out of metal, I'm, I'm sure. Name some of those things that you might expect to see in a, any given day. What we, our biggest thing is appliances. They're 100% metal mostly, so we get a lot of that in. But other things that people don't think about is the kid's swing set. When the kids are grown and the swing set's old, that's still metal. It's gonna go into the metal pile. We get a number of things, that old shopping carts that no longer work. We get people with the, the shed material for the roofing, the old tin roofing, that type of thing. Uh, just a myriad of different metals come in. Plastics, plastics confuse people. So what kind of plastic can I bring or is that just trash? If it's a hard plastic and it has a recycling number on it, bring it to us. Now, the markets change all the time. Sometimes there's markets for all of it, sometimes there's not. But we'll worry about that part. We just need to get it here. We'll sort it as it's needed for the marketing part. A lot of times we've got markets for plastics people don't even realize. The big wheel, the hard plastic kids' toys, a lot of times people don't think that that's a recyclable plastic, but it is. We recycle many, many tons of that every year as the markets allow. So what we ask is if you have plastics, bring them to us, don't throw them away, don't think it's just a trash. If it is a trash, we'll get it over there for you. But if it's recyclable, we'll work with it here. E-waste is one of those things that people don't fully understand what they've got 
But when they come in with a television, it's gonna get recycled. 100% of it's gonna be recycled, and it goes to a certain area. Legislation has been enacted that prohibit the disposal of electronics like that in a landfill. So while we accept them here at the facility, they can't accept them at the landfill phase because that's been outlawed. Now tires. Tires uh, are seen often illegally dumped, but, but you do something pretty neat with, with tires. Tell us about that. Well, like I said, our tire program was set up to try to find ways to recycle these tires. And when I say recycle, I don't mean just get rid of them. I want to see what they're turned into. Residents can bring in four a year for free. So that's quite a bonus. I don't think that's available in most places. But what we do with the tires is we work closely with a number of different companies that do different things with the tires. My most favorite one is they chip it into these little pieces that look like bark. Then they colorize it and it's a rubber bark material that goes under swing sets and playgrounds. They also chip it into crumb rubber, which is used in high school tracks, under high school football fields. These are great products and they all come from waste tires. So there's a lot of different use for tires and one that most people don't know about is they chip these up and put it into asphalt and special roads. So the tire that you were driving on the road is now in the road that you're driving on and it actually makes the road a little quieter. Is there a cost for me to come through the gates into the landfill and to recycle and is there a cost for business? There are costs involved and that's one of the things that is really tricky for everybody to understand and I just strongly encourage you call us before you come or look on the website and see what's chargeable and what's not. The county has a system where a residential parcel pays their fee for their normal waste, which is the stuff that comes in your can, your trash can, or your yard. So your grass clippings, your tree shrubs, that kind of thing, and your kitchen waste, your household waste, that's all taken care of. But that doesn't include such things as construction and demolition. If you start doing construction and demolition, when you get here, they are going to charge you. It doesn't include some of the recycling, well, just one recycling program. If you have a lot of tires, there's a fee. Now, we do allow residents to bring us four tires free a year, but sometimes they show up with 20 or 30, and we have to charge for that program. So there are exceptions to the rule, but that basically covers the residential. Businesses, we don't charge anything on a property tax or anything like that. So all business waste is chargeable. And now we work very closely with the businesses in the recycling programs because while the current fee at the gate is $45 a ton, if they will separate out their materials so that none of it's going to the face and being buried, we give them a half price deal. So instead of 45, they're 2250. We want to give them an economic incentive to participate because we know there's a cost to them. And if they can do the work for us and save us money so that we don't have to do that work, we can pass that along to them. How do people know about these diversion programs? You talk about education. So they watch this show. Yes. But what other ways? Do you have a website? We have a website and it has all the information on it. We have in the Metro Bakersfield area, we continue to put information in the phone books and a recycling guide. We have brochures at the gatehouse. If you don't know what's recyclable and you're coming here anyway, you can ask the nice person at the gatehouse and they will be happy to give you all the information you ever wanted. Uh, you can just drive in here. There is no one that works in this diversion area who wouldn't be happy for you to come by and just talk to you about it. You know, this is what we have, this is what we can do, this is how it's done. Um, that's the sort of thing we love to see. We'd prefer that you come and ask us, that you look at the website, that you get the information. Whatever you need, give us a call. Just call us and we'll get it to you if you can't find it otherwise. So as you can tell, there's a lot more going on at landfills than just burying junk under dirt. So the next time you're headed out with a load of trash, take a moment and organize it in the back of your vehicle or your trailer, and then visit the diversion areas and recycle. It's not only the right thing to do, but it will help extend the life of our landfills for generations to come. Up next, what do I do with my household hazardous waste? We'll find out in just a minute. Paint, motor oil, pool chemicals, cleaning supplies. We store a variety of these items 
in many places throughout our homes. But what do we do when we want to get rid of unused portions? Joining us today is Katrina Slayton, and she's the county supervisor in charge of disposal and recycling of household hazardous waste. I've been with the Kern County Waste Management Department for 11 years now. I started out in the community education and outreach section where I got to know a little bit more about the department as a whole. And from there I started or I went into the landfill gas program. Um, worked with landfill gas for about a year. After that I went into permitting. I was with permitting for about nine years and now I'm here supervising the household hazardous waste facility. When did the special waste program start for the county and has it grown? The special waste program started for the county in the early 1990s as just a few one day collection events held either annually or maybe a couple a year. It wasn't until the mid 1990s that we had a permanent household hazardous waste collection facility and that one was located in Bakersfield, California. Um, has it grown? I would say yes it has. For instance, in 1998, the Household Hazardous Waste programs brought in about 180,000 pounds of hazardous waste, and today we're seeing nearly 1 million pounds on an annual basis. As the numbers continue to rise, we will ensure to accommodate the program and provide the resources to be able to process as much waste as comes through. We want to capture as much of that hazardous waste and other waste that are not supposed to be disposed of in the landfill to ensure that they are disposed of legally, properly, and safely. The county has three permanent household hazardous waste collection facilities. One's located in Metro Bakersfield at 4951 Standard Street on the southwest corner of Standard and Foster Streets. The Bakersfield facility is open to residents Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Our second permanent facility is located in Mojave at 17035 Finnan Street at the Mojave Spaceport. The Mojave facility is open to residents the first Saturday of every other month from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, the months of January, March, May, July, September, and November. Our third permanent facility is located in Ridgecrest at 3301 West Bowman Avenue at the Ridgecrest Sanitary Landfill. The Ridgecrest facility is open to residents the second Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. To provide residential hazardous waste collection services to residents in the outlying county communities, several one-day collection events are scheduled throughout the county. This schedule may be viewed at our website, www.kerncountywaste.com, or you may call the facility at 661-862-8922 for that information. What can I expect uh, if I'm a business or a resident when I come to the facility? Can I get out of my truck and help you? Anybody visiting the facility will see that we are considered to be a full service drive through facility. And what I mean by that is when you drive up, you'll see a stop sign. We ask that you go ahead and stop, put your vehicle in park for the safety of the staff in and around the facility and remain in your vehicle. How do I prepare my materials for, for legal transportation to one of the sites? Materials brought to our facilities, we ask are in their original containers, if possible, labeled. If that's not possible, if the label is no longer readable or if somebody poured something into say a spray can, we ask that you write on that can or that bottle what it is so that a staff handles the material, we know what we're handling. So, what is household hazardous waste and how can I, as a resident, identify it? Household hazardous wastes are any unused or unwanted products you might have in your home that contain chemicals that are toxic, reactive, ignitable, or corrosive. And these items are identifiable by warning labels such as caution, danger, warning, poison. What are some of the most common household hazardous waste materials that you see? Besides paint, we see a lot of used oil, transmission fluid, you know, the regular automotive types of fluids, antifreeze. We see a lot of compact fluorescent light tubes and bulbs, otherwise known as CFLs. A lot of batteries of all types and pesticides. 
Prescriptions are one of those that if you prefer to not have your information known, you can either mark it out or for ease of disposal for us for handling, you can put them into like a Ziploc baggie. Just open up the containers, dump them right in, zip it up, bring it to us. You may pour all your pills into any baggie, but of course liquid prescriptions, we prefer that they stay in their container and just mark out your information. At the Household Hazardous Waste Facility and Temporary Collection Events, we offer residents that generate home-generated sharps, as these materials are called, a sharps collection container. And we'll give those to the residents free of charge. You may take that home. Once it's full, bring it back to us at any of our one permanent collection facilities or temporary collection events, and we will simply exchange it. Take the full one and give you an empty one to take back home to use. Okay, so I, I don't have a Sharps container, so I just put it in a bleach bottle. Is that okay? We prefer no, that you go ahead and visit us. Tell us that you are in need of a Sharps collection container and we'll go ahead and give that to you. Again, free of charge. How much material can I bring to a collection event or to one of the permanent facilities? Um, state regulations allow residents to transport no more than 15 gallons or 125 pounds of household hazardous waste at any one time. Okay, do you have a program for small business? We do. We offer a business program for conditionally exempt small quantity generators called squeegee. And a squeegee program is one that generates less than 220 pounds of hazardous waste per month. Squeegee programs can utilize any one of our permanent household hazardous waste facilities for a fee. All that we ask is that these businesses contact us um, fill out an application, verify that they are business in Kern County, doing business in Kern County, and once they have an account set up, they can schedule an appointment to bring their waste to us at any time. Any business that thinks they might be considered a squeegee and is interested in the program should contact us at 661-862-8922. What do you do with the materials after I drop them off? Just say I drop off several gallons of paint or some household cleaners I no longer want. What do you do with them? All materials that are brought in are separated and if the materials are in good shape and in their original containers, they can go into our material reuse program otherwise known as the Stop and Shop. About 20% of materials that come through our facilities go back into the Stop and Shop for residents to come and go through and pick up and take if they can use them in their own homes and take them back home. That saves them from having to be disposed of. When good paint comes in, we take a look at how much is in the container. If it's an amount that's usable to somebody else, it will go directly into the Stop and Shop program for somebody else to take home and use. Otherwise, we combine like colors in bulking equipment and then we pour them off into three gallon buckets and place those buckets out into the stop and shop program for people to take home and use. About 60% of our materials are separated by the material type and recycled. Those might be um, the CFL light tubes, batteries, paint, oil, antifreeze, um, things of that nature. The remaining 20% of items that come through our facility that cannot be reused or recycled are shipped off for proper treatment and disposal. Now let's talk about the stop and shop. If I stop and I shop around and I find a few items that I might need, perhaps full chemicals or paint, how much will that cost me? These items are offered to residents of Kern County free of charge. Again, we'd like for these materials to go back out into the community to be used up rather than having to be disposed of. You are limited as a resident to take with you only 50 pounds of material per week. Now since the landfill is so big and the county buries tons of trash every day, if I toss some pesticide in the trash, is that really a problem if it goes into the landfill? You know it is a problem because as buried trash decomposes, it generates what's called a leachate or essentially a trash juice. And as that leachate seeps through the landfill, it can pick up any of the chemicals or materials that are in your batteries or hazardous materials you've thrown away and potentially carry those chemicals down through and contaminate our groundwater. If you had an opportunity to tell every resident in Kern County 
that they should come to a special waste facility to dispose or recycle their household hazardous waste, what would you say to them? I'd say come on down, come see what we're about, see the programs we offer and tell your friends, family, neighbors about the wonderful programs we have that allow you to bring these hazardous materials to us at no cost for residents to be um, disposed of in a safe and legal manner. So, as you can tell, the topic of trash can be complicated, but Kern County staff does everything possible in order to ease the complication for both residents and businesses. Now, if you should have more questions, be sure to log in to kerncountywaste.com. That's kerncountywaste.com. A lot of information on their website. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Inside Kern. On behalf of myself and the KGov staff, we appreciate the fact that you took a moment to learn a little bit more about county government. Because the more you know, the better we can serve you.